so <coughs> our present topic is uh, structural damping so in our last class we have seen that for viscous damping the energy loss per cycle is pi c omega x square so which is dependent on omega so <coughs> the energy lost per cycle or the energy dissipated per cycle depends on frequency or it's proportional to frequency but we have in in structural metals like steel aluminum uh, a lot of investigations have been done and people have found that for a wide range of frequency range the energy dissipated per cycle is independent of frequency and proportional to the square of amplitude that means this it is this now if you want to find out the equivalent viscous damping you just equate it to this and you get c equivalent is this <coughs> now this alpha is just a proportionality constant the energy dissipated per cycle is proportional to the square of amplitude and this this type of damping we call structural damping or solid damping so now if you write down the uh, equation for harmonic excitation so this is the equation for harmonic excitation so for sin omega t we are taking actually e to the power i omega t and with the understanding that the solution will be taken along the imaginary axis if it is sin omega t so now in place of c equivalent we put alpha by pi omega x this. now if you <coughs> for harmonic response if you assume a solution like this where x bar is complex and contains the phase information that means the phase angle by which the displacement lags the force the information is there in x bar then it is x bar e to the power i omega t then x dot becomes i omega e to the power i omega t x bar or i omega this is same as x so i omega x now if you put in place of x dot i omega x this omega <coughs> gets cancelled out and this becomes this so now you can so here you get one x and here one x is there so you combine these two term and this becomes your k plus i alpha plus pi so this is known as the complex stiffness that means in place of stiffness you can now take a complex stiffness to account for structural damping so now if you take k common so this is this and this alpha by pi k we call gamma and this gamma is nothing but the loss coefficient for the material so k in, so this is the equation now so what is loss coefficient loss coefficient is energy dissipated per cycle divided by twice pi into maximum potential energy so here wd by twice pi maximum potential energy where capital x is the amplitude so this is alpha by pi k so this gamma is nothing but the loss coefficient now you take this solution again and you put it here so this is what you get and x bar becomes this so x bar is complex because i is there in the denominator and which means the x bar uh, contains the phase information anyway and also the amplitude information is also there and amplitude is simply f not by root over k by k minus m omega square whole square plus gamma k whole square this is the amplitude now at what is the amplitude at resonance that means if you put omega equal to omega n or omega square equal to k by m that's resonance so this term becomes zero and the resonant amplitude becomes f not by gamma k and if you think of viscous damping then resonant amplitude is f not by 
C omega n because for viscous damping this is C omega so at omega n so C omega n so this is this into cc into omega n cc is twice omega n so this omega n on one omega n from cc make it omega n square so twice m omega n square omega n square is k by m this m and m gets cancelled out so this is so that means gamma m and twice xi so so resonant amplitude is here twice xi is coming and here gamma is coming so 4% viscous damping suppose here you take 0 0.04 sorry for 0 0.04 that is 2 into 0.04 mix 2 into 0 0.04 is 0 0.08 so and 8% loss coefficient they give the same resonant amplitude uh, now we will explain one method to find out the structural damping from experiments Okay. First, let us understand the theory. So, this is the starting point which we have already seen, and here you divide the numerator by k and denominator by k. So, this becomes this. This is this. So, x bar by f naught by k is x static. So, x bar by x static is this. Again, x bar contains the phase information because there is the denominator is complex. So, this is actually x by x static e to the power minus i phi where x is actually the amplitude of or magnitude of x bar x is actually the magnitude of x bar ok so <coughs> that means x by x static and this is the phase information e to the power minus i phi that means it is coming from this i in the denominator so you know what is the angle of the denominator and what is what would be the angle of the whole thing so this is actually x by x static cos phi minus i sin phi so x by x static cos phi minus this now let us take let us consider this or let us replace this by small x and this by small y with the minus sign so <coughs> now this is x plus i y so again if you just uh, find out the real and imaginary parts of this so you just do this multiply the denominator and numerator by 1 minus r square minus i gamma and separate out the real and imaginary part so this is actually x and minus this is actually y so now if you do this then you find this so I am not showing the calculations here you can do it yourself so this is actually the equation of a circle where the si center of the circle have, uh, uh, has the x coordinate of the center of the circle is 0 and the y coordinate of the center of circle is minus 1 by 2 gamma so this is the circle so this is the center of the circle and if you put and if you put omega equal to omega n then uh, uh, your x is 0 x is 0 put omega oh, x is 0 and y is minus omega by omega square or minus 1 by omega so this at omega by omega n you actually get this point that means as you vary omega you get different points on the circle and at omega equal to omega n you get this point so this is the coordinates of this point so now you can draw this circle experimentally suppose you have a beam with a tip mass which you can a cantilever beam here with a tip mass which which you can model as a uh, single degree of freedom system y here there is a displacement sensor and you excite it with a 
harmonic force and you measure the force using a force sensor and this you assume that this is made up of some uh, some structural uh, material like steel or aluminum and or something and this has got some structural damping now you excite it you, t you plot the displacement and the amplitude and from here you can find out what is the angle by which the force is leading the displacement from that you find out your phi so one and you also know displacement so you get the amplitude of displacement which is capital X so you know capital X and phi and and by a just a static test putting some weight on the beam and measuring its displacement you can get what is the uh, stiffness of the beam so you know k uh, you know x static so x static is f naught by k you know k by putting some known weight here and measuring the displacement you get the k of the beam and if you know the amplitude of the force you can find out the uh, static displacement so you get both x and y and once you vary the frequency you just plot plot uh, the points and you get this circle and from this circle you can determine what is your loss coefficient so uh, this completes our discussion on uh, uh, structural damping so in the next class we will study uh, sharpness of resonance and we will see the different methods for finding out damping